Today we examine a video by Dr. Jason Lyle, who holds a PhD in astrophysics but still believes the Earth and Universe are only 6,000 years old. He attempts to solve the distant starlight problem, which is many stars are millions and billions of light years away, which means the light took millions and billions of years to get here. How could it do that if the universe is only 6,000 years old? Let's see what he has to say. So the next question then is a very common one, especially for you, I'm, I'm sure, Dr. Lyle. Um, I wanna first say great job in your latest informal debate with Dr. Hugh Ross. I have seen Dr. Hugh Ross debate many young earth creationists. He always wins because Dr. Ross understands science. I, I think I can speak for everybody when I say you really demonstrated just how scientific the young earth creation model is. Well, you are not speaking for me. The young earth creation position is highly unscientific and there is zero evidence for it. Any evidences that you can present are easily defeatable. All you need is a basic knowledge of science and how science works. All that is left is the Bible. While I do read and follow the Bible, I do not agree with the way Dr. Lyle and other young earth creationists interpret the Bible. The topic of distant starlight was brought up in that debate and you gave some really great responses that I believe were not well countered or responded to. I am not certain which debate they're referring to, but I have seen Dr. Hugh Ross debate many young earth creationists and I've also read many of his books about astronomy. I think the only world where Dr. Lyle defeats Hugh Ross is the fantasy world that he and Donnie live in. So my question would be this, given the biblical time scale. Do you mean the time scale that you invented due to your misunderstanding or ignorance of the ancient Near Eastern culture? That God created the universe roughly 6,000 years ago. I didn't realize that Genesis 1-1 came with the year attached to it. This question also shows the ignorance of the scientific method that young earth creationism has. They have come to a conclusion first that the universe is young, and then they search for evidence to support their conclusion. This is the opposite of how science works. Science first observes a problem and gathers evidence. They test the hypothesis in an attempt to prove it false. If they're unable to prove it false, it's accepted as being a generally true explanation or an observed fact. Young Earth creationism ignores anything that goes against their interpretation of the Bible and throws out a lot of this evidence. How are we able to see stars and galaxies that are billions of light years away? This is because the universe is 13.7 billion years, which has given the light enough time to travel from the star to Earth over billions of years. There's more than one way God could have done it. The, the method I think that he used doesn't involve any kind of supernatural activity at all. Of course, God can do, you know, God can do miracles. That's not a problem for God. Yes, he can do miracles. The Bible lists many of them. In fact, I would say the initial creation of whatever was here before the Big Bang is a miracle. It was literally something from nothing. The problem is that in order to believe the earth is 6,000 years old, one must first read the Bible and accept it as authoritative truth. A non-believer believing the earth is 6,000 years old because of the Bible is like someone believing the earth was once flat because J.R.R. Tolkien said it in the Cimmerillion. The Bible is clear that God's work should be clearly seen by men. To me, this means men should be able to see it without reading scripture. Many men and women much smarter than me have examined the evidence and concluded the universe is 13.7 billion years old. If God made the universe 6,000 years ago, why is it that no one, studying the scientific evidence alone, none of them have concluded the earth is 6,000 years old? So we dare not say, well, I don't understand how you could have done that, God, therefore you didn't do it. Of course not. We say, wow, God, we have studied what you've done over the last few hundred years and learned so much and have so much more to learn. Thank you for allowing us to understand the long process that you took in order to create a home for us. We also don't put God in a box or allow our presuppositions to influence how we interpret the evidence. Well, that's absurd. I mean, you'd have to eliminate the resurrection and turning water into wine and all these things. Well, one story is clearly a miracle. 
The other is a description of why God did something viewed through the viewpoint of an ancient culture from an ancient time with a limited scientific knowledge. But um, the way that I think that God got the light here is I think that he, the Bible is using a synchrony convention that's different from our modern synchrony convention. I'm familiar with this viewpoint, so I kind of know what's coming next. The biggest problem with Dr. Lyle and others like him are their viewpoints on the Bible, especially Genesis. They view it as a literal story, an actual historical description of what is going on, and also as a science textbook. I don't look to the Bible for science any more than I look at Biology 101 for theology. The better way to look at it is that Genesis is an oral tradition that was later written down in order to tell people why God did something and what God did, but not necessarily how they did it, because the people that wrote it had a very limited understanding of science. It's a theological lesson. There's only one God. God did everything. God comes from outside of space and time in the created universe. And God did it for a purpose. He didn't do it so humans could serve him. He did it for a very specific reason, to have a place to put his prized creation and have a space that he could be with. That's the idea that two clocks separated by distance are synchronized. Well, how do you decide if two clocks separated by distance are synchronized? Math and science. Now, for if the distance is short, it's pretty easy. You just look at them and you say, well, they're both synchronized. You can make the argument that you can't really see both, but I won't get too picky when I'm arguing with them. But uh, if, if light takes some time to get from to, from that clock to your eyes, then that might be a little bit of a problem. You might They might look synchronized, but in fact, one of them's a little bit of a head, head of the other, but it took more time for light to get from one than the other. So you see, it becomes a little bit of an issue. Welcome to the weird world of relativity. This is why GPS satellites have to be corrected while they're in orbit, so that they can give you accurate directions. Uh, when the clocks become separated by cosmic distances. I'm not an expert, but since light doesn't experience time while it's traveling, I'm not sure you can make a relativistic argument that way. Compressing 13.7 billion years down into six days is pretty big stretch. And uh, it turns out, this is something that Einstein uh, wrote about, it turns out that there is no objective way to synchronize two clocks separated by a cosmic distance without assuming the speed of light in one direction. Assuming that light travels the same speed in both directions has worked since we've known the speed of light. It fits every model that we have in every experiment, whether light is traveling towards Earth or away from it. And when I mean the speed of light in one direction, most of the experiments that have been done to measure the speed of light involve either directly or indirectly a, a two-way trip. Yes, because of how light works, it's very difficult to measure the one-way speed of light. It's like you're taking light from a source, you're sending it out, bouncing it off a mirror and bringing it back and you're measuring the total time, total distance, and you divide the distance by the time that gets the average velocity. It's very rare that I agree with Dr. Lyle, but yes, that's how you measure light. And a lot of times people assume that it takes the light the same time to go that way as it does to go that way. We don't really know that. And in fact, according to Einstein, it's impossible to know that. We don't know for sure, but if there's evidence this view is wrong, please provide it. Assuming light travels the same in both ways has worked for hundreds of years. People say, why would it be different in different directions? Well, I don't know, but it, there's no reason why it would have to be the same either. I know where he's going with this, so I'll give my thoughts on this later in the video. And uh, I, I found this, the concept's a little bit uh, difficult for layman to grasp because it takes a little bit of knowledge of the physics of Einstein, and so. Yes, with just a basic understanding of science, it can be. Thankfully, we have many more resources than we did before. We have YouTube. We can watch Dr. Ross and Dr. Neil deGrasse Tyson to learn more. Um, I actually wrote a book about this topic called The Physics of Einstein, where it brings people up to speed on the physics that they would have to know in order to recognize why you can't actually objectively measure the one-way speed of light. Well, I hope the book is purely science, not full of young earth creationism pseudoscience. Because you'd need two clocks that are exactly synchronized, and there is no objective way to do that in the universe. There are subjective ways to do it, where you can say, I'm gonna call this synchronized. Doing it this way has worked for hundreds, if not thousands of years. And, and the bottom line is, if you use the ancient method of synchronizing clocks, which is a vis visual synchrony convention, clocks are synchronized if they look like they're synchronized, basically, then light takes no time at all, even today, to get from those distant galaxies 
uh, to the earth and so it can actually arrive instantaneously. I'm not sure how he's making this conclusion. From the viewpoint of light, he's correct. When light travels at the speed of light, it does not experience any time relative to the viewpoint of the light. So a photon leaving the sun and arriving eight minutes later is not eight minutes older. It's the same age it was when it left the sun. From the viewpoint of the person on Earth, though, it took eight minutes for the light to reach them. The same is true with distant stars. The light did not age a billion years as it came here, but from our viewpoint, when the light traveled towards the Earth, it took a billion years for it to reach us. Light may not have experienced time, but it still traveled a long distance in a long time to get here. And that doesn't violate any physics. It's actually perfectly consistent with the physics that Einstein discovered. It's just light not experiencing time does not violate Einstein. But if you're going to say it instantaneously appeared on Earth after leaving a star, you're going to need a lot more evidence than you've provided to back that claim up. That a lot of people don't know about it. And I know that's a little bit abstract. I found that it takes probably at least 20 minutes really to bring people up to speed on the basic issues so that they can comprehend the, uh, the, the thrust of the argument. But I do have a series of articles on our website at uh, biblicalscienceinstitute.com. Our latest articles are on this very issue. In general, I don't trust young earth creation websites as a valid source of scientific knowledge mostly because they ignore so much evidence and violate so many scientific principles. So if you want to learn more about stars, I would recommend Cosmos or something a little bit more modern. You can watch Neil deGrasse Tyson's Star Talk. And why I think this, what I call the anisotropic synchrony convention is the, is the best method. It's consistent with the physics of Einstein. Nobody can disprove it. It makes sense historically. And in that model, light can get from the farthest galaxy to the Earth immediately. It takes no time at all. Well, it's a solution to a problem that never happened, and it fails for many reasons. The biggest one, because you haven't given any evidence to back it up. Even Answers in Genesis admits that nobody has a very good solution to this problem. And therefore, there is no distant starlight, if you understand physics. Great. Now show evidence this is happening. Right now, it's at the hypothesis level, not at theory level. Anyone can make a hypothesis. I can propose that God gave light tiny little cars to drive across the universe. But if I don't back it up with evidence, I'm going to be laughed at, and it will never reach a theory. Awesome, that was a great answer. You have presented a hypothesis without any evidence, and then claimed that you've solved all of young Earth creation's problems. What causes this to happen? What is so special about Earth that light travels instantly towards Earth and only towards Earth? How does light know that it's traveling towards Earth and not away from it? I'm sure that somewhere you've explained this better and you're dumbing it down a little bit for the audience and the host, but can you provide at least one piece of evidence? Um, matter of fact, even going back to your debate two months ago with you, Ross, um, he objected that your distant starlight argument by asking, when we look at the sun, do we see the sun as it is now or as it was eight minutes ago? Well, it takes light about eight minutes to reach Earth and then there's a little bit of refraction in the Earth's atmosphere that changes how the light reaches us. If I'm reading it correctly, it should actually take about 10 to 13 minutes to reach Earth, but I could be wrong. If I understand Dr. Lyle's viewpoint, then light should instantly reach Earth. It'll be interesting to see how he answers. Right, so it appeared right. that by asking that question, Hugh Ross didn't fully understand the physics of Einstein. Actually, he does. I don't remember the exact article, and if I can find it, I'll add it to the description. But Dr. Hugh Ross has written an article denouncing this idea that Earth is a special place in the universe with the ability to attract light towards it instantaneously. I also doubt that somebody with a bachelor's degree in physics and a PhD in astronomy would somehow not understand Einstein. Now, what would be the best response or argument to that? specifically yeah yeah when he asks that when he asks is it this or that it's like asking is a table three feet long or is it one yard long and of course the answer is both it depends on how what what units you choose to make the measurement with and so whenever anybody asks that question you know does, does it take light eight minutes to get from the sun to the earth or does it get here instantaneously or 16 minutes to, and the answer is it depends on the synchrony convention that you choose okay but according to the one you're picking Light from distant stars reaches instantly. 
So shouldn't light from the sun also reach us instantly? Way to avoid the question. There is no objective answer to that question. People get frustrated because most of us have a view of time that it's sort of absolute and universal. It's the same everywhere, clocks all tick at the same rate. This problem is more of an interstellar movie relativity problem, I feel. Not a how long did it take light to reach us problem. We have one viewpoint to worry about, that of a person on Earth. Everything, you know, you don't have to worry about these synchrony problems, but Einstein discovered that is not the case. Correct, but it does not compress 13.7 billion years of interstellar history into a six-day creation week. Time is not the universal objective thing we think it is. It, it's affected by motion, gravity, and things like that. But we are not studying that. We're studying the one-way trip of distant light from distant stars to the Earth. And so the amount of time it takes light, now the amount of time it takes light to get from A to B and back to A, that's objective, and there, there, that, that time is objective. That light took billions of years to get here because there's nothing special about the position of Earth within the solar system and the known universe. And there's no, uh, there, there's no getting around that. The round trip speed of light is set by God in vacuum. You can't change it. Well, what is it about Earth that makes it so special that you decide light travels instantly towards Earth and only Earth? But the one-way speed depends on how you choose to synchronize clocks. And so does light take eight minutes to get from the sun to the Earth or does it take no time at all? The answer is yes. I really hope that somewhere in this video, you show us why. And uh, the same is true for distant stars. Does it take years for their light to get here or does it arrive here instantaneously? The answer is yes. It depends on which synchrony convention you use. And I believe the Bible is using the more ancient synchrony convention in which uh, the celestial events are marked by when you see them. You think somehow people with a very low knowledge of science somehow understood Einstein? Does it matter how long it took light to reach Earth or when people saw it? I can say that a supernova happened when I saw it, but it doesn't change the fact it happened a long time ago, and it took light a long time to reach us. And so in the, using that system, God created the entire universe. The light was immediately visible to Earth on day four, when as soon as God created the luminaries. This to me almost sounds like the light in transit theory, and I don't like that. It makes it so that all we can see never happened. How is there time for a star to go supernova or a black hole if everything happens instantly? And that gets around a lot of these other issues too of uh, you know people saying well god made the light already on its way well then he's making pictures of things that don't exist Th this gets around all that because all the stars that we have pictures of really existed in real time it's just that we see them immediately at least we both agree that light and trans is bad theory i'm still waiting for evidence to show why light travels towards earth instantly and only towards earth seems to me to be a i think it can happen so it must have happened and I don't have to give the evidence. Thanks for watching the first half of this video. In the second half, we'll watch Dr. Lyle try to go through some of the rebuttals and criticisms of his theory and see if they hold up. If I didn't convince you how wrong Dr. Lyle and younger creationism is, I hope at least made you start to think about it. I challenge any young earth creationists that are listening to this to do your own research. Don't just listen to someone. Don't just believe something because somebody told you to believe. It would really help me out if you liked the video that you can hit the like button and plus subscribe. And here's a few more videos for you to watch.